guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I want to welcome you back to the channel. Now, you know when I'm doing a hand shot of a video that this is definitely something pretty special that just does not do it justice from sitting in on a, on a tripod. So what we have here, guys, is a Feather Industries Feather USA 45 ACP carbine. I believe they were called like the RAV 45. And I know very little about this gun. Okay, what I can tell you about this firearm is that it is on loan to me from Stan, the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Guys, give Stan a call for all of your firearms needs and he will definitely get you a great price on uh, as many firearms as he possibly can. So go ahead and give him a call. And as you know, if you're a follower of the channel, uh, Stan does loan me firearms from his private collection. And he allows me to, to take them out, shoot them, bring you guys some tabletop reviews and some cleaning videos and so on. So what's cool about this carbine is basically it breaks down into components. You can remove the barrel completely with just the removal of this barrel nut. Um, it's got the wire stock which comes out and it's very easy to take apart, almost in like the same kind of family as the Sten gun uh, or grease guns and things along those lines. It's a blowback action 45. So we're going to go and bring you a little cleaning of this uh, particular firearm. We're going to disassemble it, clean it, and reassemble it just like this, although I've got a case full of accessories that came with it, such as a uh, at, what A2 style butt stock and a barrel shroud that looks kind of like a suppressor. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this cleaning video. All right, all right, all right. So real quick history lesson just before we get started. Um, it says in 1995, this is taken from FeatherUSA.com, which is the company that either bought out or took over Feather Industries. It says in 1995, Feather Industries went out of business. Three years later, Feather USA was formed, building the same style rifles with Uzi style mags for the 9mm and 45 ACP. Then in 2008, Feather USA changed everything with the ability to use standard Glock magazines. Now this 45... Uh, ACP carbine that we're going to be taking apart does in fact use the Glock magazines. It's very rare. For one thing, it's the 45, which you don't find a lot of, and it's even more rare that it uses the Glock mags. Now, I don't believe that these are still into production. You see very few of these uh, for sale out there on GunBroker and other websites. Um, it does say that the gun is going to be going back into production soon, but I have no idea when that website was last updated or when that information was posted. So anyway, just a quick little history lesson on this particular firearm. Now we will be bringing you some range footage of this gun as well as a tabletop review in the near future. Okay, back to that cleaning. Okay, and for this job, it's going to be some fairly uh, straightforward cleaning supplies that we're going to use in accessories. Rem oil, CLP, some cut up cotton t-shirts, especially a nice big chunk because we're going to be running through the whole basically cylinder of with the barrel removed and you've got a large area inside that you're going to need to scrub down and clean so you want almost like a washcloth to put in there. Uh, gun patches, a 45 ACP uh, cleaning brush as well as, I've got, I don't have a 45 caliber, I've got a 410 um, uh, swab, okay, barrel swab. Uh, weapons light and, well not weapons light, sorry, barrel light. Soft uh, brass bristle brush and a couple nylon brushes and just a couple chunks of cleaning rod that have been connected together that you can use to get in there and scrub out the entire body of the firearm. And as always, a nice steaming hot cup of Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, I think today we're making the caffeinated as f blend. I'm not going to finish that because you know what it means. And I like to keep my uh, channel family friendly. So anyway, let's continue with this cleaning. Oh yeah, don't forget your ammo cat. Okay, first things first, just go ahead and push the mag release button, which is on the back side opposite your ejection port, and remove your magazine. Now, this particular model does take Glock magazines, which makes it very rare. The fact that it's the 45 caliber makes it hard to find. Um, and the Glock magazine models didn't come along until later on in the production run. Um, and then they also came in 9mm, 40 cal, uh, 357 sig, 10mm, and 45 ACP. But some of those calibers, good luck trying to find one. Okay, all right, uh, now that we went ahead and did that, let's check the chamber and make sure that we are empty. Okay, there are no rounds in the chamber of the bore. Okay, go ahead and release, and we'll go on from there. Okay, now for this next part, uh, we could go ahead and leave the barrel attached if we wanted to to clean the barrel out, but it's going to be just easier to remove it, and hey, it uh, simply comes out by taking off this little cap. Why not? You want to be really careful on this particular firearm. There's a lot of polymer parts where you wouldn't think there would or should be polymer, polymer parts like this. Um, release tab that you're going to push down on right here in order to turn the barrel nut. So when you push down on that, what that's going to do is that's going to provide a little bit of pressure. This tab actually keeps this ring in place when you lock it in. It keeps the ring from, from turning and sliding off, but it's made out of polymer. And so we're talking maybe 20 years old, 15 years old. So I want to be careful with it. I don't want to break any parts, obviously. Uh, go ahead and turn the barrel nut until it comes off. I believe you use the same cap as the front and the back. By the way, I want to give a shout out to the uh, Military Arms channel. Uh, Mac did an awesome video nine months ago on the 9mm version of this carbine. I'll put a link to it at the end of my video. And it's because of him I'm able to figure out how to safely disassemble this thing and clean it. Okay, And uh, go ahead and remove the barrel. Barrel comes right out. 
Okay, we'll take a look at the barrel here in just a moment. Okay, now we're just kind of taking a look at this monster barrel. I mean, this looks like, oh my God, it looks like a lightsaber or a billy club or something. Um, when you reassemble it, it's pretty simple. Okay, you've got your feed ramps that need to be towards the bottom right here. Sorry, guys, Ammo Cat's going crazy <laughs> looking out the window. And you got this little notch right here that's going to fit in a slot on the top of the, uh, the barrel. Okay, it's cut into the top right in front of the sight. When you reassemble it, it's only going to go back in that way properly. So you got to make sure that's seated properly. So, okay, we got that taken off. Let's go ahead and remove that rear wire stock, and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, uh, removal of the rear wire stock is pretty simple. We're just looking at the, the rear of the pistol right here. So all you have to do is slide this little knob over right here, this little button. And there's a pin that goes through the wire stock right here. We're gonna slide this knob over and then just pull the wire stock right out. Okay, now that's all done. Let's go ahead and remove that bolt. You know guys, you do have to admit at this point, this looks straight up like a, like a Star Wars blaster. Man, it looks like something you see a stormtrooper carrying. It is so cool. I don't know what year this particular gun was made. I'm guessing, like they said, it would have been 2008 or later. So it's not super old, but it's also not one of the newest production models out there. So, all right, now to remove the uh, bolt carrier group and the blowback uh, action and all that fun stuff and the charging handle, all you got to do is go ahead and, uh, oh, for, first of all, you have the same type of little release here that you see on the front, on the rear. Okay, you're going to want to push on that. Little tab. I guess we can go this way if we want to. And uh, you're gonna probably have this under a little bit of pressure. There's a couple inches of spring, both your recoil spring and your firing pin spring. They're gonna be popping out of here. So we're gonna do this slowly. And hopefully it doesn't launch across the room and we lose pieces. It, it's a pretty simple design. It's just a few parts. By the way, the sights on this are polymer and so is the trigger. Uh, almost looks a little flimsy, but sturdy enough to function. So, okay. Make sure you guys can see that good. Okay. Go ahead and keep screwing and we'll put a little bit of pressure on the rear here. Again, even if you're not, if you don't have one of these, it's still such a cool gun to check out. Okay, we're going really slow. All right, we do have a cap right here and let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so it's always important to make note of the layout of this stuff before you take it apart. So you're going to pull this cap out. And if you see these holes, okay, you've got a certain arrangement. You're going to have the top hole towards the top. As you reassemble the gun, you just push a little bit of pressure on it to get this to go on, and that'll actually take care of itself when you start screwing that back of the rear receiver on. We'll pull out the top spring, okay, which is your recoil spring, it looks like, and we've got this hole towards the rear, so let's make sure when we reassemble, we do it exactly how we take it apart. And then we pull out this spring right here, okay, takes care of that. Okay, then what you wanna do is go ahead and pull, pull the uh, bolt all the way to the rear, and it looks like this is going to be the firing pin mechanism maybe that's going to come out of here. Okay, that comes out. There it is. There's your firing pin and your holder. So it goes in this way on the bottom of the uh, bolt. Okay. And then we need to pull this all the way back and out. And you can pop out that charging handle. Okay. Then after that, it looks like we can just go ahead and take the main bolt carrier group out. And we'll take a look at this. Okay, all right, just a big tube. Oh yeah, you've also got that, uh, the trigger, if I'm not mistaken, you have to pull the trigger down. Uh, you have a, uh, I don't know what this is up here, the ejector maybe that's sticking up. I think you might have to pull the trigger in order for that to reassemble, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, no surprises right now. Very simple design. Okay, so it came out just like this. Can't mainly do this for myself, so when I reassemble it, I'll mess anything up. Okay, we can see here very, looks like a, Freaking Ruger 1022 bolt carrier group on steroids, doesn't it? That is insane. You've got your extractor right here, uh, slot for what your ejector, I'm guessing, or your recoil spring. Beefy man, this sucker's got to weigh at least a pound by itself. I mean, this wow, that is a heavy duty design. That's that's some serious serious steel going on there. All right, um, I think what we're gonna go ahead and do first is just uh, clean up the barrel because that's probably one of the simplest parts, and then we will continue from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and spray down the uh, baton lightsaber, I guess I mean uh, barrel with some CLP. And go ahead and just put a little bit down the rear of the barrel. Barrel. There's a little bit of rust on this, uh, the rear of this barrel. This could just be simply from moisture and just, uh, you know, years and years of use. So go ahead and get all your CLP all over the barrel. Okay, we're going to let that sit for just a minute. Shoot some of the uh, CLP down the front of the barrel too, okay? 
And this is probably the messiest part. Getting the sucker clean the first time is probably the toughest part. Okay, we sprayed some down the barrel so it's running down now. Gonna let that soak in there and give it a nice scrub. Probably just gonna use rim oil. I don't wanna get this like super greasy, although you probably could. I don't know if it would make much of a difference. Um, okay, let's go ahead and just wipe off the barrel now with a cotton patch or a chunk of t-shirt, whatever you, whatever you wanna use. Ah, there's a little bit of some grease coming off on this and some some powder residue not much it's actually in really good shape I don't really know how many rounds have gone through this thing and of course you know you don't know how durable the finish on this thing really is uh, coming from the factory okay we're gonna wipe off the the feed ramps you know you don't know if it's the kind of finish that can survive thousands of rounds before it starts to show anywhere or if it would start to show wear after just a couple range trips okay all right no problems there okay now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and run our bore brush down the bore. We're going to go from the rear to the front. Okay, so we're going to take our cleaning rod with our bore brush and just go ahead and push that through. Okay, that's a 45 uh, ACP bore brush. Now instead of pulling it back and going the other way, we're just going to go ahead and take it off, put it on, and run it through again. Really not a lot of resistance. That is surprising. I was expecting it to be a little bit tighter bore, but who knows? Okay, we run that through. Now, before we run the bore mop, I'm going to go ahead and just put the, the usual um, patches and on my cleaning rod. We're just going to run some patches through and go ahead and scrub it out. Okay, so hang tight for the next step. Okay guys, just to save you a little, bit, a little bit of viewing time, just go ahead and run this through your barrel, take off the patch, pull the rod back out, run it through the barrel again, take off the patch. Do that three or four times, or if you've got a 450 or what, 45 caliber bore snake, if you happen to have one, you could run that through. Unfortunately, I don't. Mine are only as large as 30 caliber, so it would almost be pointless running a boar snake through. So we'll do that, and then we'll come right back, and we'll clean up that bull carrier group. Okay guys, I've given it a good scrubbing and a good cleaning. Now the final step is just going to put a little bit of rem oil on a 410 caliber barrel mop. Okay, now if you happen to have one of these, if you, happen to, if you have a 45 caliber one, go ahead and do that. I'm just pulling out what came out of my, uh, my multi-use cleaning kit. I'm gonna kinda put that in there and scrub a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna run this through probably uh, two or three times. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that, and then we will continue with that bull carrier group. Okay guys, for these uh, this next set of components, we've got your recoil spring and your firing pin spring and all that fun stuff. We're just going to go ahead and just uh, just go ahead and give everything a little bit of a spray down with some CLP. We'll wipe that on, wipe it off with some patches. Everything we're dealing with here is steel or aluminum. Uh, by the way, the front and rear, the barrel cap and the uh, rear receiver cap, this stuff is all, these are also compatible. So you don't have to worry about mixing them up when you disassemble them. I should have mentioned that on the disassembly, but I didn't. So just go ahead and uh, wipe everything down with some CLP. Okay, you can go through all the little cracks and crevices, almost like you're cleaning, you know, uh, a slide on a firearm. Uh, it really isn't a whole lot different design. Yeah, kind of a design similar to maybe more of like a grease gun or a Sten gun, right? So make sure everything's got a nice uh, generous coating of CLP on it. Uh, we want to go ahead and just take a nice, uh, decent sized patch here. Put some CLP on that so we can wipe everything down here. Like I said, it was fairly dirty when it came out of the uh, receiver. You want to wipe that all out. You can get in there. You can get in there with your brushes and stuff if you want to, or your Q-tips. It's got a very, very sturdy extractor. Like I said, it's a, it's a little dirty, but not bad. I mean, you know, you can tell it's been shot a little bit. And that's okay. It's good. At least we know it's going to work, or it should work when we take it out. Get in there. Uh, you might want to maybe take uh, possibly like a little center punch and get in there and cr uh, clean out those cracks and crevices or get a Q-tip in there if you want to. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and just uh, wipe everything down for a few minutes so you don't have to sit around and watch me do that on camera. You can do that at the same time if you have the same gun. Okay. Oh, and just real quick, um, when you go to the website for the company, they do sell some parts and they sell some upgrades like a buffer for the rear that kind of levels out. I guess these two springs can get out of whack over time. They don't line up properly. And they sell like a replacement buffer. They also sell uh, a remanufactured trigger pack on their website. And so it'll be interesting to see if the company does come back into business. You would think with kind of the whole renaissance and sales of firearms that we've been looking at the last couple of years that the company, these companies would start to maybe come back or sprout up because there's just a demand in the market. Especially, you know, with the rise in popularity of the 9mm carbines, those AR-15 style carbines. Uh, now would be a good time to come back with something portable like this. I'm telling you, this would just be a, a great idea for a nice little truck gun. I'm not sure about the legality, how that works with the concealed carry permit if you're allowed to 
obviously in your state carry a, you know, a, a disassembled rifle in a case or if it has to be out or if you can, if you're allowed to keep it, um, you know, disassembled while it's just being transported to and from, say, the range. So I'm not sure about all the legality behind it. If I traveled with it, I would, I would probably keep it just assembled so I could use it if I needed it. But it's nice to know that if you needed to travel, you probably could. So, all right, I'm going to go through this uh, bolt carrier group here, this, uh, this receiver. Um, with a little more detail with some brushes and some q-tips so instead of boring you guys with that uh, I'll just go ahead and come back and then we will continue with uh, cleaning out the, uh, the upper receiver okay all right so hang tight okay so here's what we did guys we blasted a liberal coating of rem oil inside the whole receiver and the barrel shroud up here in the magazine well and we're just gonna go ahead and just start wiping stuff out um, we're going to wipe out the magazine well. I'm not going to separate the upper and lower receiver. I don't know how to, and honestly, I don't think it's really uh, user serviceable. You know, when it comes to these very minimal guns, there's not a whole lot that you need to do to them to maintain them. So again, just wipe out your mag well. Okay, and now go ahead and take your cleaning rod and put a good size, you know, just piece of cloth on there or cotton cloth or whatever you want to do. And I'm not going to spray anything on this because I've already sprayed out the inside fairly well with rim oil. And just uh, get it on your swab and then just kind of wrap it up a little bit. And you're just going to clean it out. almost like a cannon or something, man. <laughs> Go in there and just swab the heck out of everything. Swipe it all out. We'll see how much uh, residue comes off on this. Now, I used a you know fresh, clean uh, piece of cotton cloth here, uh, you know, straight up. Uh, cut up piece of t-shirt. We're just going to go through everything. You want to be kind of careful because you do have, I don't know, like an ejector right here or whatever this board, whatever part this is down here. I think it's an ejector, actually. Uh, in the lower part of the receiver and you know you can kind of go through and wipe it out yourself if you want to yeah it's caught up on the ejector there we go I'm just going to kind of go through and, and wipe out the parts that I can okay and you know you could go through and use some uh, CLP in here if you want to man I almost need like a mop or something to go through here uh, but that's going to definitely help clean it out and the second time I'm going to take apart and clean it completely before I return it and that second time when we clean it even more uh, crud and crap is going to probably come off on it so all right, so that takes care of that. Okay, now when we have it all reassembled, uh, we will go ahead and just wipe down the whole exterior, okay? All right, let's go ahead and begin the procedure of reassembly. Okay, so we're just gonna do this step by step, just so we don't screw anything up. So you wanna go ahead and take your bolt, okay? Make sure you've got, make, make sure the rear of it looks just like this. Okay, you wanna go ahead and take your firing pin assembly and your little firing pin spring and go ahead and push it in underneath here. And there's a channel that it's gonna go into, so it's gonna be held in place, all right? No problems there. Now you want to go ahead and take your uh, spring. Make sure you have the hole facing the rear. You've got, well, I guess there's a hole on both sides. Never mind. Go ahead and put it in this hole right here. Okay. No problems there. Go ahead and take your spring and put it over the rear of your firing pin. Again, if I'm off on the names of any of these parts, guys, I do apologize uh, tremendously. Okay. All right. So now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and put this back into the rear of the receiver and we'll walk you through the step of getting that uh, charging handle back in the bolt. Okay, so this uh, procedure is going to be pretty straightforward. So just go ahead and take your bolt and go ahead and push it in the rear of the gun. It should just go right in. You want to make sure that you have this little dimple right here lined up with this notch. And we're going to go ahead and push our charging handle in. Just push it in there and then go ahead and push it forward and it's now locked into place. Okay, and just push the action forward. It's going to go ahead and stop. Okay, now we need to make sure that we take this rear plug right here and you want to make sure you have this little circle towards the top and go ahead and push on the back. Now again, um, you're gonna have a little bit of resistance as you put this back on, because this is under spring tension, okay? So just take either of the front or rear cap, it doesn't really matter, and go ahead and push it over the back. Okay, hold the pistol firmly, and begin to screw the rear on. Now remember, if you let this go, okay, it's gonna shoot off at you, so you wanna be really careful. Here, let me go ahead and try this from the other side. All right, all right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and push in. If it does not slide in and it will not budge, you've screwed something up. You want to take it all back apart and reassemble and put it back in. Now, again, that little latch is on this left-hand side, that plastic latch. You don't want to push really hard. It seems like kind of a fragile piece. You don't want to break it. Go ahead and twist that rear receiver nut. Okay, until it stops. Okay, it takes care of that part. Voila. All right, now let's go ahead and get that front barrel back into place. Okay, to reassemble the front barrel, make sure you have this little notch right here on your lightsaber and uh, make sure you've got your feed ramps towards the rear or towards the bottom, okay? Go ahead and push your barrel back in. 
Okay, and you've got that little notch up there on the top of those threads, and if you have that part in place and you're good to go, you might have a little spring resistance on there, and that's okay. That's just the uh, action of the gun. All right, go ahead and put your front barrel nut on. Remember, you got that little button underneath that you're going to have to push as you reassemble this. Just go till it's nice and tight, till it stops. It tightens up a little bit, but it's not too hard. Obviously, getting some lubricant on those threads will help out quite a bit, too. Okay, it gets snug really quick. You do that, you're all set. Okay, let's go ahead and do a little functionality test on this before we put that wire stock back on. And like I said, I'm going to be doing this in a different version when I take it to the range. So we'll talk about the stuff that I did to it. Okay, go ahead and test out the action. Okay, it's nice and tight, nice and tight. And pull the trigger. Good to go. Pull back again. You can hear it... Uh, you can hear the firing pin as I pull back on it. Listen, you hear it, you'll hear it click, so it's cocking into place. Hear that? There you go. All right, good to go. Let's go ahead and wipe that uh, wire stock off with some REM oil or some CLP. We'll reinstall that, and we are good to go. All right, so to install that wire stock, all you're going to have to do is push this little button over, okay, and take your wire stock. You're going to want to push it through. And it'll slow, you want to make sure that you guide it into the next set of uh, loops that's on each side, okay? And if you miss, you can just uh, remove it, no problems. Okay, it's now locked into place. I think you can collapse it some more, maybe. Let's see. There you go. You can actually take it in a second notch and take it down to its minimum length, okay? Now, guys, all I'm going to do is go ahead and wipe the whole gun down with some CLP on the outside and just let it sit overnight so it has a chance to kind of cure and give it a little wipe off in the morning. So in a nutshell, guys, that is basically your Feather USA 45 ACP disassembly and cleaning. Uh, after I take it to the range and shoot it and bring it back, I'm gonna give it an even more de detailed and thorough cleaning before I take it back to standard SS Pond. So again, great guys, thank you out to SS Pond for loaning me this firearm from your private collection stand. And uh, yeah, so the next time you see me, we'll definitely be taking this out to the range. So. Guys, I want you to please like or subscribe. You can check me out over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, gunchannels.com with the Caliber Corner. You'll find my podcast there. I'm also on the Ordinary Average Guy Gun Channel on gunchannels.com. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, you can also check me out. You can support me on Patreon. Um, as, again, this is not a cheap hobby to, to do, and it's not a cheap hobby to, uh, to bring you videos on. So it's uh, www.patreon.com backslash TravisP11. And I think that's about it. So, all right, there we go, guys. I want to thank you for watching. I want you guys to have a great weekend. Uh, and as always, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.